All right, Mum? Yeah. All right. Mariah is one of thousands of Māori living with dementia. With an ageing population, dementia is going to be a major health issue for all New Zealanders. Excuse me. Yeah. What how about that? helping me with the peeling of these? Because it'll take a while. Okay then. This is how we we work to, as a family. We work together. When I use a chopping board, Mum, so you don't cut yourself. Just put the potato down. Better. Mariah Kuzak is 83. Her dementia came on as a consequence of a stroke. So we, um, when we went to doctors yesterday, um, so Mum doesn't actually know our names, but we're her daughters and sons, and um, she talked about my brain's just not working. You know, why can't you know, like, why, why don't I know this? And she goes, my brain's just funny, you know? And so, you know, that sort of, you know, brings a tear to your eye, really. Dr. Margaret Dudley is the head of a research project at Auckland University, developing tools to better diagnose dementia in Māori. The tools include helping Māori patients and whānau better understand and manage dementia. What we are developing is a tool that is informed by Mātauranga Māori. It's built on the kuriro, on the whakaro of our queer and kaumātua throughout the mutu. So we are not making this up. We are not saying this is what is good for you. They have already, they have already told us what we are doing. It's just putting it into a package so that the Pākehā clinicians out there can utilise it when working with Māori clients. Like mum's sort of gone to become a toddler again, you know, and it's, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and I suppose because I'm an expert, eh, mum? Do you yeah. think I'm an expert? <laughs> Do you think I've got good patience? Get, get the water into that, so. So there are a number of symptoms that can appear for people with uh, early onset, so um, dementia, so at first, you know, maybe confusion. With the pot? You've got to it there beside you. Oh, sorry. That's right. Having memory difficulties, um, not being aware of where you are, getting lost. Those are the, the symptoms that may indicate early dementia. They are aware that their faculties are, 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 are progressively getting worse. So there can be depression, uh, anxiety associated with early, on, with early dementia. As the disease progresses, um, usually insight is lost. And so you can see, you will see change in personality. People can become aggressive. Uh, people become more forgetful. New memories are lost. With mum's stroke, it didn't affect her physically, but it affected her recent memory and her eyesight. So mum's very tunnel vision. I live with my children and, and grandchildren and um, I, I think I've got a good team in my family. I, I treat them the same. That's my children. I love them all. Her doing the dishes is her supporting the family. Prior to her dementia sort of kicking into that next level, she used to do the washing. So, um, and that was part of her being part of the whānau. Mum would say to us, oh, have you got any spare pillows? I've only got one pillow, but I need two more because I've got friends coming over tonight to stay in my bed. And I'm like, OK, well, who are they, Mum? Those became more and more frequent. It's a huge burden on the on the Fano, particularly in the early days of diagnosis and the uh, when the person is in the moderate stages of of dementia, it can be hugely taxing on on the Fano. And so, what we hope to do is to provide some information around how to cope and how to manage uh, this burden. My day starts at eight, and so I've left the house at quarter to eight, and Mum's caregiver comes in at nine. 
So mum's pretty much home alone for an hour. Hi, Mara. Hi. How are you? All right? Good, thank you. Hi, Julie. Hi, Karen. How's your afternoon? Yeah, not too bad. Yum, sausages for tea. Yep. All right, Mariah. Yep. Having a caregiver allows Tui to work and keep mum at home. I'm actually a home care support worker. I have other clients as well, but um, I'd say Mariah's one of my favourites. I'm not allowed to have favourites, but yeah, she is. <laughs> You're going to your course tomorrow, aren't you? The seed room. The dementia meetings that you go to every Thursday. Really? Yeah. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, because I pick you up at one o'clock. Oh, we, we talk. We have a laugh. <laughs> and we share, share, oh, uh, share everything, you know. I think we're pretty close. <laughs> we really get on well now. So we understand each other. So it's really neat. Good learning coup for me, though. I've learned a lot. Margaret is also collaborating with a team of Māori experts. They're working on developing a comprehensive theory of Māori and dementia. The brain's a bit shrunken around the edges oh, there. Yes. Um, they've had a small stroke here. In the past a small stroke there? So that's the black, right. black part of the um, brain here. Okay. This is one of the standard things that mm. we order for people to um, see whether we can identify what the underlying cause of their cognitive impairment is. Dementia can be a result of any disease or condition that causes a permanent decline in a person's ability to reason and remember. It occurs when healthy brain cells stop working. Dementia is not a condition that automatically comes with age. On this particular scan, you can see that there is some atrophy at the front of the brain. Yes. Atrophy meaning the, the front part shrunken down. So this is a person with dementia? Yeah. In a younger person, you would, wouldn't expect to see this black. Black is just water around the brain. So there's, the grey part is the brain itself. The grey part's shrunken down a bit away from the skull, which yes. is white around the edges. So this is a scan of a patient who is how old? Yeah, they're 82. These findings would um, you'd describe as mild to moderate atrophy yep. um, in the front part of the bone. So playing kitty or poker, the way the doctors explained it is she's had her stroke and because her brain has been damaged, that's why dementia kicks in quite quickly. I don't know how to play. It's like poker. It doesn't matter. Just pick it up. Okay. Do you know the game? No. So you can pick, you pick a card up. They call it like stairs, you know. You only go down, you never come back up. So mum had had a stroke and um, me and my sister were there when the doctors came in and said, you know, this is what's happened to your mother. <laughs> Are you cheating? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, they used all the um, doctor talk or doctor language and they left and then they said to Naomi, did you actually understand any of that? And she goes, um, no. <laughs> and so we actually thought, actually, that's quite rude, you know, like, because, you know, they gave us all this jargon and then they wanted us to, to siphon through it and then come up with questions. And we both were like, um, yeah, we need to think about that one. Can we come back to you? To help people like Tui understand what dementia means, Margaret is going to AUT to develop a phone app to provide clear and accessible information. The purpose of the phone app that I want us as a team to develop is so that we can inform whānau, inform um, Māori of what they can do in terms of this fight against dementia. So it's aimed at um, not only whānau who are suffering with this disease or living with this disease, but also uh, whānau who uh, don't have the disease because if we give them enough information and if they, if they um, put into action that information and that, uh, that kind of knowledge, then they can actually 
we can actually work towards preventing the onset of dementia, putting that kind of power in their hands to make a difference to their future in terms of um, warding off dementia. As a Māori, like, it's very hush-hush um, how we deal with things, um, and it's good to be able to talk about things like dementia and mental health and stuff like that. Um, with Fano, We know our Fano access uh, Facebook and social media. Um, and so that's why we thought a phone app for disseminating this kind of information would be ideal for our Fano. I wonder if you've got any examples of what this app might look like. With the app that we did um, yeah. for this marae, yes. we did, so like there's like different, so here's our homepage, mm -hmm. and then like you can go into Māori protocols, um, get Māori waiata. We have like little buttons that you can push that um, do audio for the waiata and then you also have the words in both Māori and English and then oh. even some of them have like a little video. That's wonderful. This is knowledge and information at your fingertips. That's pretty much how I envisaged it. Um, colourful, um, engaging. And you can update it any time too when you add additional videos or yeah. information. Yeah, wonderful. The course of dementia, in fact, starts many years before it is diagnosed. So we want to provide this information so that Fano can be proactive and can actually take control of their life path in terms of this condition. Mariah goes to a day program once a week. It's held at Seadrome, a residential hospital for people living with dementia. Most of the residents live on site. Mariah is one of the few who still lives at home with her whanau. Uh, Seadrome have developed a Māori kaupapa program which uses tikanga, te reo, and te ao Māori to exercise the brain. This is the this is what I what I got to say. Kape. There is Maori clients here and that's someone that mum can relate to um, for being Māori, because mum has also done other day programs, but yeah, she didn't really like them, but there weren't Māoris there. Um, e te tahao tōku mama nō rāhiri me pipiwai ahau, uh, e te tahao tōku papa nō uh, Ngāti Kahununu me uh, Mania Poto. Seadrome couldn't provide this program without te reo speakers like Takina <laughs> to reconnect kuia and kamatua to their culture. So what happened is that when the people of the Ngātoki Matawharua waka and the Māmari waka came through the harbour, what they did was settle on separate sides. The lesson that they had today, we've been going through um, on the map where they all came from and they all marked it all themselves last week. And then we kind of started from the top and going to work Murka way down. So then they all kind of know a little bit of history about where they come from. So this place here, Oha, that's the Hokianga. Mm -hmm. And the people of the Mamariwaka actually traveled around and they settled around this area. I think at the end of the day, I just like being with my people. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and they teach me a lot about the history that they know as well. And then here's just another Mariah photo. grew up speaking Te Reo. Tui didn't. Of, um, One benefit of the program is Tui connecting with her mum's past. It's 
socialisation has been shown uh, to be a protective factor uh, in the fight against dementia. Uh, the reason being, people who have been social are uh, stimulating their brain, uh, activating neurons in the brain. And so uh, the more you activate the brain and use the brain, uh, the better it's going to function. So in some ways, the brain is like a muscle in that the more you use it, the better it's going to function. Kaputa. Hakina. They also say people that have dementia do go back to their Hakina. native tongue. She was courted on Māori and we were never brought up speaking Māori. But actually, she, um, she sort of went back to her childhood and because that's what um, they had sort of said, that um, because of mum's stroke and where it happened within <coughs> the brain, her, her, um, her childhood memory was very, um, she could remember her childhood, but she couldn't remember um, today. I learned that it's kind of better for them to um, have someone who kind of knows their culture and where they come from, because they kind of go back to well, what they learned first was mostly Māori. My auntie, she had dementia. She passed away a few years ago, but yeah, I didn't really quite understand it until I came here. You know, so back then when she had dementia, I was just kind of like, oh, auntie, you're acting a bit different. But yeah, now I understand it more. And I wish I had this knowledge when she was still alive so I could have helped her and go through it, yeah. A number of people reported that they didn't want their um, their loved one to go into a nursing home. And actually, I know this from my own experience. Um, my mum was unwell, she didn't have dementia, but she was bedridden for the last two years. And putting in a, her in a home, the shame of that would have been worse than the actual disease that killed her in the end. So we kept her at home because there is that, uh, there is that Māori way of keeping our, our ill, um, our elderly at home, irrespective of how well or unwell they are, and taking care of them to the, to the bitter end sort of thing. We have excluded any Māori worldview from our discipline. And I think that probably is the situation or the case across the board irrespective of what area of health we're looking at. Māori come into a Pākehā world to get medical help, but the Pākehā clinicians or the Pākehā world or the Pākehā services very rarely go into the Māori world to actually see what is needed. Tēnā koe whāia. Ah, tēnā koe. Hāra mai. E noho over here. There's little things that uh, clinicians can do, like uh, saying kia ora, uh, like pronouncing our names properly. Minor things like that can make a huge difference and really engage the person, who the, the patient and the whānau. So Fai, today we are going to, I'm going to be asking you to do some tasks. So we're going to start with one task here. And what I want you to do is, using these blocks, I want you to form that picture, that design on top with these two blocks. Né? All right? OK. okay. Today, Margaret is putting fire mediana through standard exercises used for diagnosis of dementia. These tests will be redesigned with a te ao Māori view. Is that the, the hey. same as that one there? Kapai. Yeah. All right, here we go for the next one. Are you ready? Mm. Go. The assessment that we used on our fire this morning is a tool that is 
commonly used with our people uh, in this country, whether it be in the health sector, the justice sector or, or the education sector. So the implications of the outcomes of these measures are widespread and significant for Māori. Well done. The problem with those tools is they have been developed overseas, uh, usually in the United States of America or the United Kingdom, and they have been imported into New Zealand and, and imposed on Māori. And on this task, I'm going to say a word to you. These are all Pākehā words, eh? Um, what I want you to do, what your job is, is to tell me what that word means. Glove. Uh, for your hands, keep your hands warm. For your hands, or, keeps... or for washing, keep it, sanitary reasons. Okay, breakfast. What does breakfast mean? Early morning cake. Aye, car pie. A square. What we want to do is create or develop a tool that from the ground up is based on Tao Māori, it is based on Mātauranga. What the tool will do that we are developing is it will portray a more accurate uh, and more valid profile of how that person is functioning, how their mind is functioning, how their memory and their thinking abilities are functioning. So, Fire, how did you find that? Um, I thought I was quick with my eyes and, and my thinking. Mm -hmm. But if I was to grade myself mm. personally, between one and five, I would only say I'm two. Really? Mm. You might be under, underestimating your, your skills. Uh, let me s have a look at the whole performance. I'll come back to you. We can meet again and we go through the report and I'll explain the results to you. When we provide you with strategies or techniques to manage and cope in your daily life, we will uh, highlight those strengths so that you can utilise those strengths to make, um, to make your life uh, that much easier. So kia ora fire for uh, coming in and doing this mahi this morning. I tenei, uh, I tenei rā. It's, it was a good exercise for me to use that part of my um, thought process and, um, and I found that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. At um, Manuko Marae in uh, Te Tai Tukiro. This is my Marae. This is the Marae of my Tupuna, the Marae of my heart, of my home. Margaret has been following a group of Kuya and Komatua from her home Marae for more than a year. Today, her and fellow experts are sharing some of the early findings with the group and giving them tips on staying well. And we have come here to uh, talk with the whānau uh, about the rangahau that we are conducting, Māori and uh, mate wareware or Māori and dementia. Māori to come here to drink your coaches. No way, how am I? How do I get out of the data to put a funny fucking mahala tanga? I'm very passionate about it because I think it's going to make a difference for always, forever. Our queer, our kaumata have always gone out of their way, put their efforts into helping our tamariki, our rangatahi, our mokopuna, and now it's our turn for us to do something back for them. We, they make sure that we are doing a rigorous scientific research project as well as and combining it with Matauranga Māori. We can marry the two worlds. There is a pathway forward where Matauranga or Te Māori and Western science can take our people forward. The Western tools that we were using for cognition assessment and for thinking about the ways to evaluate the mind were not appropriate and were not correct. Some of them were saying, well, I'm just sitting here waiting for my dementia because they didn't realise that not everybody gets dementia. They thought that was a normal part of growing old. That's just a lack of information. 
They want to know what they can do to help themselves. They want to be independent and, uh, and function in the community and keep functioning as a member of the whanau for as, as long as possible. So one of the things that Makarena and I discover is some movement and some brain stimulation can be very good. It's a multi-sensory exercise method. Hey, big. Okay, so if it's pointing this way, it's the left-hand side of your body. Okay, so let's do the tomb, which is... The, the effects of dementia can be reduced by controlling weight, socialisation, eating well and exercise. Tomb. Good. Clap. Space. Clap. 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 Tomb. 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 If I was to give advice to our queer uh, kaumato, to our whānau, it would be to be involved, be uh, engaged and be active in te ao Māori, be uh, present at activities on the marae. Uh, this actually sits really well with what Māori have been saying for many years, is that a positive Māori identity equates with good health and well-being. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mum, are you ready? Should we go and have some breakfast? Yeah, OK. Despite the added responsibility, Mariah's Fano are determined to keep their mother at home for as long as possible. There are really good support agencies out there for, for families. You know, like, it's OK to ask for help. You know, you, you got to have that attitude because it is hard. I've had many cryful moments with my mother, but actually, you know, you've got to look for that wellness for your mother. Her care could become more full-time. And, you know, financially, that's another pressure, and who's going to look after mum? We don't want to put mum in the home because she, I suppose, belongs to us. <laughs> and um, she's very part of the family. I, I love this place. And um, oh, there's something about it, you know. I, I, it's home. I would say she'd go down home because we're not there. You know, Mum's 83. She's lived here 50 years. My parents have invested on us and on their life. Right. This is where my mum belongs. She belongs here with us, you know. She teaches me to be strong as a woman. She teaches me to love. She teaches me to respect people. And she teaches me to fight. That's what my mum teaches me. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.